All right, welcome to this video on how to write simple programs in C. So this first slide, we're going to start by talk about the style of a C program. So all of your programs are going to be their source code, and you're going to have a um, word processor in your Visual Studio. So at the top of every program is going to be a comment. And this comment is going to include some information. This is called a header comment, and this will be on the top of every program that you do in this class. Now there's two ways to comment in C. The first way to comment, and what a comment is, it's just information that is ignored by the compiler, but it is for the application developer. It's like notes to yourself. Well, for this class, your header comment is always going to include your name, the date, and a description of the assignment. All of uh, my samples include a header comment at the top. Now, like I said, there's two ways to comment. The first way is just to put two forward slashes, and that's good for one line of code. And the other way is to do forward slash asterisks, and everything between the two asterisks is, uh, is going to be a comment. So that would work good for a paragraph or more than one line of code. You can also use the same uh, style for one line. To me, it, it makes no difference. I don't care which way you comment, but every program in this class is going to have, should have a header comment on the top. After the header comment, there will be preprocessor directives. Preprocessor directives are things that tell the computer, tell your computer and your program things that are needed to make your program work. One preprocessor directive that will be in every program you do in this class is pound include std io dot h. And this is used so that you can do input and output. That means that you can read from the keyboard and write onto the screen. Without this library, you certainly do not want to write the code on how to read from the keyboard and write to the screen. There are a couple other preprocessor directives and I will show them to you in the next slide. Preprocessor directives usually start with pound include or pound define. The next thing that's going to be in every program that you do in this class, it's going to have a main function. So each program that you do, will, all of them will have a main function, and it looks like this. int main, and it's a block of code with an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace, and it will the, the ending statement will be a statement that says the word return, the number zero, and a semicolon. Now this is the standard setup for all programs in this class. So I'll just repeat, you will have a header comment at the top, which you can choose either way to do comments, either two forward slashes or the comments between the asterisks. And if you are using a IDE or integrated device like Visual Studio, it will help you. These header comments will be green. Then you're going to have preprocessor directives. You're going to have at least two in this class. One is pound include stdio.h. This is for libraries to do input and output. The other one is a pound define for doing um, for the Microsoft compilers, which I'll show you in the next slide. And all will have a main function, which is uh, int space main with parentheses, opening, closing, curly braces, and a return zero statement. Return zero, it, this is an integer, and the return type is an integer, and we will learn more about that later. But right now, this just means that your program executed correctly, and it is now done. So here's an example of what a program looks like. So there should be up here a comment that has your name, date, and then this is 
a description. This is a program that converts distance from mile to kilometer. This is the preprocessor directive I was talking about that is used for Microsoft compilers. You will need it if you are using uh, Visual Studio 2017. You definitely need it. Uh, if you are using 2015, it may work without it, but what it does is it, it gets rid of some of the warnings that will clog up your feedback window. So it's very important that you have this. This other one is pound include stdio.h. Like I said, this is for input and output. And this one down here is something we will talk about later, but this gives you the, the ability to define words for numerical values. So it's called a conversion constant, and we will talk more about that later. And here is just an example of what a main function looks like. It's just a block of code. And you can see all of this green in here. This is, these are comments. The blue in here are reserved words in the language C. So uh, as we learn more about things, uh, you can go back to this program and it will make a lot more sense. So again, we have preprocessor directives, which that is the pound includes and the pound define. Library, that's the pound include stdio.h. And the macro, constant macro, which is the pound define KMS right here. So if you look here, these are preprocessor directives means all of these. The library, that is this stdio.h, and this constant macro means that I'm describing, I'm using this word right here, KMS, and everywhere this word it is in my program, it will be, will, will be replaced with this numerical value. Now, I'm sure that if you are new to this, this looks very, like a lot of information, so I'm not expecting you to understand everything that's going on here. I'm just giving you an overview of what a simple program in C looks like. So let's, this is a more of an explanation about comments. They're green and the two different ways in which you can do comments. The first way is by two forward slashes and the second way is forward slash asterisk followed by forward slash asterisk forward slash. Okay, so the next thing, this is just talks about the main function, which is what we've already talked about. This is the body of every C program, C and C++ program has a main function in it. And the main function tells the program where to start executing. So once you create this executable, you might have code all over the place, but it tells the, uh, when it starts to execute, it says go to the first instruction right here after the opening curly brace of the main function. There is only one main function in, the, uh, in each program. So each program has a main function in C and C++, and there is only one main function. All right, so this is declarations. So there are declarations in here. We are declaring what we're doing here for the declaration is when we declare this variable called miles, let's use a different color here, this variable called miles and this other variable called KMS, and there are of data type double, what happens is we get, if you look back at the other uh, videos I made, we will get a piece of memory like this, it's my memory map, and we will get a piece of memory the size of a double, one for miles, and we will get another one for KMS. And at this point, we don't know what values are there because we haven't assigned any values yet. But as we learn more about variables and declarations and assigning, then we will have contents. But at the moment, just at this declaration right here, all we are doing is getting a piece of memory and until we put values in there, we don't know what values are there. So, executable statements. So declarations is where we just declared these variables of type data type double. Executable statements are statements that give instructions and tell the computer what to do. So here are a couple examples of executable statements. This is an executable statement that says to print 
this sentence right here onto the screen. Executable statements all end with a semicolon. Declarations also end with a semicolon. Multiple declarations are separated by a comma. Now these are all things that we will be learning throughout the semester, so these are just rules and an overview of some of this information. So this is also a type of an executable statement. These two executable statements are called function calls, and they are function calls to the functions that print onto the screen, which is printf, and scan in from the keyboard, which is scanf. So these are function calls, a function, to print, a function call to printf, which is in the form of an executable statement that ends with a semicolon. This is scanf that ends with a semicolon. This is a different type of executable statement. This is actually a statement that is altering the value of this variable by performing this math right here. And then, so this is a, what's called an assignment statement. But one thing to note here is that all statements end with a semicolon. This return zero also is a statement as you notice, it ends with a semicolon. All right, so there are some reserved words in, um, in, this, in the language C, and they have special meaning. And the nice thing about Visual Studio is that if you try to use a reserved word, it's going to be blue. So the, the data types that we're going to be using in here are int, double, and the other data type is char. And we're gonna be declaring variables and we're going to be using these different data types and we are going to have to come up with names for our different types of data and the things that we want to use. So when you are coming up with names for your data and your different types of data, you wanna make sure that you do not use any reserved words and that you follow rules, which mean that they have to begin with a letter they cannot begin with a number, so I can't declare a variable that starts with a number. I can't declare a variable that has an asterisk in it or with a uh, single quote. And when I declare a variable or I use or I, I, I must make sure that there's no white space in it as well, just like with usernames. All right, so here's where we have examples of declaring variables. So right here we have our data type. So we have three different data types in this class. We have double. Double is used for floating point numbers, numbers that have uh, precision like 3.14, 6.95. We have integer. Integer is used for to store data that has a whole number. Now they're different because doubles uh, have take up more memory space, number one, and number two, there are certain things that you don't that you measure as whole numbers, like you measure a person's age in a number, or you would measure how many times you've been to Europe. You're not going to say I've been to Europe 6.4 times. You would say I've been to Europe six times. So that's what an integer is. A char is a character. So everything on the keyboard is a character, including the space. So an example of a double like the number five as a double would be 5.0. An example of the number five as an integer would be just a single five. An example of the number five as a character is a five inside of single quotes. Now the thing that you want to keep in mind is that these are all different. They're different types of data and they do not mean or are not used the same way. All right, so here's just some more information about what an integer is, a double is, and a character is. So each character will evaluate to a numerical value, but the character two is not going to have the numerical value of two. It's going to have a different a numerical value. Everything goes down to numbers and ones and zeros in a computer. All right, so here's just some examples of declaring some variables. So we could do int. Now, We'll put them inside of our main function so you can better understand where they go. So I can declare an integer like int num equals 10. 
So what I'm doing here, this is a declaration and initialization. So I am declaring a variable of type integer whose name is number and initializing it to the value 10. So if my memory map is here, I would have a variable called num. It would have a location in memory. Say this is the beginning of zero, byte zero. It would be located here in memory and it would have a value of 10. If I say double score one and score two, you can declare variables separated by commas. The ending semicolon makes it a complete statement. So here I would get score, I'd get a piece of memory for score one, which has a location. And I would get a piece of memory for score two that has a location. But once again, I do not know what is stored there because I have not given it any value or any content. And the third data type would be char letter equals X. And so I would get a piece of memory to store a letter and it would be an X. Now you, what you cannot do is you cannot declare separated by commas items of different data types. So you can separate by commas items of the same data type, but you cannot separate by commas uh, variables of different data types. But I could do letter equals X and then have here letter two. And if you notice, all the names that I've chosen have no white space, they don't start with a number, they don't have any weird special characters in them. Now there's two ways to declare variables as far as if you want them to be more descriptive. You can do int uh, my id, which still has no white space but has a underscore in it, or you can use uppercase letters like this. Either way is fine as long as you are following the rules that there's no white space and that it has, uh, you know, that, that you're not starting with a number or any of those special characters that are not allowed. So this is just a little information about characters. So each character has a, a code. So like the capital letter Z it has the numerical code of 90, and the lowercase letter z has a numerical code of 122, which you would think uh, like a lowercase a is 97 and a z is 90. Like there's not, you know, you might not know what all of the character codes are, but they all do have a numerical code, and uh, white space has the code of 32. For us, we, we really want to be more, um, instead of worrying about the integer value of a character, we want to use characters as characters, but knowing that they have an integer value, know, you know that you can compare them. Um, however, sometimes they might not compare the way you want to because a capital A and a lowercase a are two to have two totally different values. So, all right, so here's just some more examples that, uh, an explanation of how executable statements end in a semicolon. And some more examples, uh, not handwritten, of declarations and initializations. Now some other things, these are, this is a, right here is a declaration, int number one, and it's an initialization because it's being assigned the value of 25. Down here, this is just an assignment statement. So what's happening down here is that the value of number two is getting assigned to number one. So the way that it works in C is the receiver, the receiving part of the uh, assignment is on the left. So when you're making an assignment, it's not number one is turning to number two, it's, yes, it is number one is taking the value that number two has. So after this executes, both number one and number two will have the value of 55. After this executes, 
So when you start here, also the thing about code is that it starts from uh, what's uh, from the top and goes down. So whatever's above, whatever is on the bottom and happens last is what will override it. So right here, char letter equals H, but then after this st ex assignment statement executes, letter will be changed from an H to an X. So if I were to draw the memory map for this, You could see that we have here number one that has the value 25 number and has a location. We have number two that has the value 55 and has a location. We have score that has the value 38.7. We have letter that has an H and if you notice I'm going right down starting from here now we say number one equals number two so what's going to happen is number one is on the left side of the assignment and it's going to change and then letter equals X it's going to change from an H to an X